Welcome to Adultish, the Young Adults Podcast powered by Christ Fellowship. Happy 4th of July! This is amazing, our country's freedom anniversary. Today we're going to be talking about freedom, and this is going to be an amazing topic because I have two amazing guests, but first and foremost, myself. My name is Sam Lanero, and I get to be one of the young adult directors here at the church. So, my guests are... What's up, guys? My name is Gabby. I'm here from the Palmetto Bay campus, and I serve as... Yes. I serve as the small groups director here. Thank you, Gabby. Ma'am, on the end. Me. Hi, guys. My name is Didi Hernandez. I am the director for the Doral campus. Hey. So, Doral in the house. Let's love go. our Doral peeps. We do yeah. love our Doral peeps. I, I do too. Used to be Miami Springs peeps. Anyways. No. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> Back in the That's where night. I started out, and then I started switching around all over the place. Anyways, uh, so it is 4th of July, and fun fact it's this young lady's birthday tomorrow happy ha- birthday. so happy birthday to you ma'am thank you thank you uh but we do want to know how you guys celebrate the freedom that we have in this country so we're going to shoot it over to dd first uh so we do very standard fourth of july celebration we do the fireworks we go usually to the park um, but one of the ways that we celebrate freedom is, uh, we're going to get a gun. Yeah. We're going to buy a gun because you can buy a gun in this, uh, in this wonderfully free country. And so we've been wanting to get one. I had one and then I had to sell it. And mm. then, you know, cause I was in another country that does not allow. Them. Uh. And so then, uh, we're, we're actually thinking about getting one. My husband really wants a, a big one, uh, one like of those. A- like a revolver. AKs. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh. All right. Oh. We're, we're having conversations about that one, though. Those are expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right. So that is down. It's, that's a Florida tradition down here. For sure. Uh, I, knew, I grew up with a lot of country guys, so they all had guns and we blew up fireworks. They yeah. were homemade. And it's fun times. A lot of barbecues. So yeah. North Carolina. Gabby's from North Carolina. So yes. North Carolina, what do they do up there in 4th of July? We eat a lot of hush puppies. What's a hush puppy? <laughs> hush puppy. I know what? what a hush puppy is, but for the sake of our audience, what's a, a hush, hush puppy? puppy <laughs> is a delicious concoction. It is fried dough oh. that's made from cornmeal, and it's just one of the most ultimate comfort foods. I'm not that crazy about Southern food, but hush puppies are just delicious. We also have watermelon milkshakes. Mm. Which doesn't sound like should be a thing, Milk but shakes with watermelon. Mm. It doesn't sound like it should be a thing, but I'm telling you. <laughs> Is it like vanilla ice cream? In it's there vanilla or? ice cream with watermelon, like blended in, and it doesn't get watered down. I don't know how. It's probably the ratio, but we also have like a lot of guns going on Fourth of <laughs> July. <laughs> um, I think guns is like a national celebration, especially <laughs> yeah, especially where I grew up. I grew up in Johnston County, oh, so that's as Country. southern as southern gets. So yes, lots of hush puppies, watermelon milkshakes. Can't forget about the fireworks, but yeah. Hmm. So on the topic of freedom, I'll shoot this one to Gabby. Uh, yes. On the topic of freedom, what does it mean to be free? I mean, we live in a free country, so what does that mean to you? I think here it means just having the ability to express certain rights. Like here we have the freedom of speech, freedom to bear arms, and it it's just what we are at liberty to do within the confines mm-hmm. of our government. Mm, mm-hmm. the confines of the government. Yeah. I'm going to throw that out there, yes. <laughs> yeah. What's your what's your opinion on that? Um freedom is just I think the ability to make your own decisions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's, you know, there's freedom as it pertains to us here in this country and other countries. We know that there's limited freedom in other countries um and some where our parents are from. Um, And then there's also spiritual freedom, which I know we're going to get into that later. But um, I think it's just the ability to make the decisions that you want to make work as hard, specifically in this country, work as hard as you want to work, get as far as you want to get. And just the ability to make your own choices Mm -hmm. and see where that leads and bear your own consequences for your choices. Um, So, yeah, that's I think. In a broad sense, that's what it means. Mm. So. 
those are those are two very good definitions of freedom uh and i think almost everyone could agree with those two statements so then like you said we are going to dive further in with freedom more in the sense of spiritual freedom and Mm -hmm. what it means to be free in christ so that's that's really our topic our freedom that we have in christ so just to kind of define that you know romans i'm opening my bible yes i have my bible here (laughs) uh uh, romans 6 14 says for sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law but under grace so that really is like that's like the crux of like the freedom that we have in Christ. We're no longer bound. We're no longer slaves to our sin, but now we are free in Christ. Mm -hmm. So that's really what we kind of want to talk about. So then the freedom difference between how we celebrate freedom and what freedom means to us in a, in a country like the U S where we still have laws and governance and everything else. How does that differ from the freedom that we have in Christ? Just to give people the kind of comparison and contrast so they kind of understand this topic a little better. Um, so one is one is very simply spiritual freedom is just death to life. Right. I mean, it's you were once dead in your transgressions and now you were made alive. And with all the things, you know, when we read in scripture, it does talk a lot about law and, you know, Old Testament law and then Jesus Christ and him coming to fulfill all those things and us not being bound to specific parts of the law. Um, and so, yeah, so spiritually death to life and then mm-hmm. how that compares to um to our freedom here in our country mm-hmm. it's again just the ability to make those decisions if you look at it just the 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 documents that of the constitution the founding documents mm-hmm. honestly they go hand in hand because the rights that we've been given in this country are f- the foundation is is the rights that we've been given mm-hmm. by our creator and mm-hmm. it, sa- it says it in the documents like inalienable rights that have been given by our creator the rights mm. to liberty to freedom to um happiness. to happiness yeah. yeah so there one doesn't go without the other mm-hmm. specifically in this country okay. what about you gabby i would add where our freedom comes from because mm. living in this country where we are free and we have more rights compared to other countries we're still living under a flawed government mm-hmm lot people and politicians president we're not they're not perfect and the conversation changes all the time in this country what should it mean to be free Mm -hmm. how are we supposed to express our freedom but when you compare that to the freedom we have in Christ it's something that is concrete that it's definite and it's coming from someone who is completely perfect and never changing therefore we never have to question what our freedom will look like in him Mm -hmm. So, so then this is, this is a really cool, uh, pathway then because in John eight, we see Jesus talking about, uh, you know, you are now set free from your sin. I'm paraphrasing Mm -hmm. so often, Mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, you're set free from your sin and now you are free to live a life that is obedient to what I ask you to do. And then in that, he also says, you know, when you do, as I say, that will lead you to the truth and the truth shall set you free. So it's if we're looking at a flawed system, we're looking at the government itself, we're looking at people themselves, we're, we understand that we're all still sinful. Like we're free mm-hmm. from our sin, but we're still sinful. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. And that kind of sucks too, if we really think about it, because it's, what do you mean? <laughs> like, <how> am I, <laughs> yeah. what, I'm still gonna sin, but I'm free from my sin? Mm-hmm. This doesn't, this, this kind of messed up. Like, yeah. but, but I think it it's is, like free from condemnation of sin. Yes. Right, right, right. So we, does, I mean, we're still in our flesh and blood, we still, mm-hmm have the ability to sin but now we are no longer condemned for it we've been justified so justified mm-hmm. just yeah. means that but you know standing between you and a just god is jesus christ the perfect sacrificial lamb who has no blemish or or sin and so that's what makes us being right standing with god and so that's what it means like he doesn't see us as sin because christ took our sin he sees the perfect one right yeah so I would add we're not condemned anymore, but we now also have free access to the Father Mm. through Jesus' sacrifice. And we also, in turn, once we receive Christ, we have the perfect helper, the Holy Spirit with us also that helps us to live out that freedom according to the laws and the commandments that the Lord gives us. Mm. Yeah, it's a very fine line though, which is is why we need the spirit. If we didn't have it, I'm telling you, we'd be screwed. Like we would be like, we would still be We'd make a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. We still make a lot of mistakes. But if we didn't have, you know, if we didn't have the Holy Spirit, it would be much harder 
there's there's such clear like Gabby was saying like yes our freedom is it's very clear because of who's who's given it to us mm -hmm. but as we walk in this world we walk with certain freedoms um but there's there's a fine line between what we are we are to do and mm -hmm. what we are not to do right. you know it, it says i think it's first corinthians 6 it says you know everything is permissible to me but, but not everything is beneficial. beneficial to me and if it weren't for the holy spirit i mean he helps us discern in this setting mm -hmm. this is this is okay mm -hmm. Um, and in this setting, it's not okay. Right. But if we're not walking in the spirit, there's no mm, discernment there. Right. Then we can mete la pata, you know, and we yeah. can make <laughs> mistakes <laughs> and, <laughs> and become stumbling it. blocks when <laughs> when we are we are called to not do that. Right. And so something that would be permissible in this place, like you know, like Paul sitting and eating specific food with specific people, or circumcision versus uncircumcision back in that day, like mm -hmm. that was a big deal, but. To be able to walk that line requires the Holy Spirit Absolutely. at all times. So then going on that topic of permissible, because we do, I think a lot of times, like, we do break laws here in the country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no Speeding. Matter. Hello. <laughs> I'm so, every day. Rolling stops. Every uh, day. <laughs> <laughs> like, we, 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 we break laws all the time. The same thing like the Israelites did. They had 612 laws that they had mm -hmm. to uphold. And Forget the it. Lord knew that they were never going to be able to Forget do that. It. So he also instituted the sacrificial system for them mm -hmm. to pay for the laws that they broke. Yeah. So it's like, with that, sometimes we teeter that line of permissible too much and we end up taking things for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, we end up taking that freedom from sin for granted. How, how have, how do you, how do we as believers take our freedom for granted, Gabby? I think it's really easy to forget, especially the longer that you are walking in your faith, what it was that he set you free from from the beginning. Mm -hmm. One of the things I have to do constantly in my walk is remind myself where the Lord took me out from mm. and just remember who I was before Christ and constantly just point myself back to that. If I'm not reminding myself of the sacrifice and how, ex how much exactly it costs, because again, it can be so easy to forget how much it actually cost him. Mm -hmm. And when you forget the value of things, you just, you fall into this routine day after day and reminding myself constantly of why I need him and where he has got me out from helps me on a daily basis to remember my freedom in Christ and remember that I'm not bound to who I was and that the Lord is constantly outworking me, pushing me forward. And we're all going to be a work in progress until the day he comes yeah. back for us. Mm -hmm. So it's just a fine line between remembering without lingering mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and who I was before. Mm. Yeah. You, from, from, from the director's standpoint, how have you seen young adults take that for granted? I think we forget testimony. Mm. And I think that's one of the things that even just for me, I'm 35 now, but I was 25 at, you know, 10 years ago. And I, that was, that was the twenties were that the time, you know, the, the age range that we are oh. ministering to right now. Cool. And, and things are much easier to access and life is harder, mm -hmm. I think. But I, I just remember one of the things that would pull me through a lot, a, a lot of times and, and that would remind me um, to be very careful with not abusing that freedom is testimony. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where our young adults are struggling in that they they want to carry out the Great Commission. They want to be able to minister and give the gospel to their friends and to the people that they know, their coworkers. But it's so hard because so many of our so many of them are struggling with one foot in the world and one foot, mm -hmm. you know, in with Christ mm -hmm. and they're struggling with how can I tell this person about Jesus if I am, you know, out with them on the weekend and doing everything that they're doing. And so I think the more we stress, our job here is to spread the good news of Jesus Christ and to have people come to know to the, you know, of the saving grace of Jesus, but you need to be above reproach. Mm -hmm. If you're not above reproach, I mean, the more above reproach you are, the more authority you have to speak. And, and say, look, this is what Christ has done for me, not because I'm perfect, but because I strive to be more and more like Christ. And 
when you strive to be more and more like Christ, you have more joy, you have more contentment, you have more peace, and that is the hook. And so mm-hmm. if, if our young adults understand that being with Christ and walking with Christ means that you get more of the good stuff, it's, such, it's more of an incentive even for them to just be like, you know what, yeah, and that is what reflects to the world. It reflects mm-hmm. to their coworkers, it reflects to their family that are unbelievers, it reflects to their college friends, which that's a hard, hard stomping ground. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I think I think a, one of the ways that people kind of take this for, believers specifically take Christ's freedom for granted is, well, I've been justified. I can continue I'm on. Good. I'm yeah. good. It is it. He'll save me. It's okay. Yeah, <laughs> like, he'll forgive me for that he'll later. He'll forgive me for that later. It's a... Yeah. We're good, Jesus. We're, we're all good. But it's, I think, I think that was kind of like me in my 20s where mm-hmm. I was like, in my early, early 20s, I was like, he's got me. He's, yeah. a, I'm, I'm okay. I can keep doing but what I'm doing. did you not feel like, like the, the, the passage, passage that talks about grieving the Holy Spirit? Did yeah. you not feel oh, absolutely. grieved? Like yes, I, think, I could have been doing all that stuff, but mm-hmm. I just felt in the bottom of my soul grieved because the spirit of God was grieved. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like you can only go on like that for so long. Yeah. Yeah. Like Absolutely. how many, how many years where you're like, God's got me. <laughs> Ooh, probably from like 17 to about 22. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I was it's like, a good, I'm, I'm, a good I'm several saved, years. I'm justified. I'm, Yes. I can go on like this for a bit and yeah. then 22 Especially God was like, hey, guess what? <laughs> yeah, you be done. <laughs> it's so easy for us to talk the talk and walk the walk and appear to, I guess, our community here within the church that we're fine, that we have it all together. But Mm -hmm. if we don't have that sort of accountability and we're not being honest with ourselves and really just inspecting our hearts and our spirits, Mm -hmm. we can lie to ourselves and others so easily and convince everybody that we're not living in that freedom. And that's a a scary place to be in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is why it's one of the things that I, have loved seeing as specifically in our campus is the the confession that brings freedom. And you know, That's we cool. went through James and it talked about, and I think it was in James James five, like confess your sins to each other um, so that you can be healed. Right. The 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 more confession there is in our small groups and with our young adults, the more healing there is because the more freedom there is. Um, because we can we're opening up ourselves and our lives to be held accountable, to be checked up on and cared for in a way that the world is never going to do do. ever Mm -hmm. because they just care about comfort and they care about fun and appearances and, you know, climbing ladders and all that is at the end of the day, it's like, it's meaningless and empty. What, what is, what it has value is community that is like, Hey, Mm -hmm. are you okay? But sometimes like, Hey, you need to stop. Yeah. Um, and that there's freedom in that because it allows us to rid ourselves of our sin and let go of the burdens and help have other people help carry our burdens, which is exactly what James says. Like yeah. confess your sins to each other so that you can be healed. Mm. Healed. What's awesome is that when you get into that area of like healing from your sin and like truly accepting like the freedom that you have in Christ, you get to enjoy life. Yeah. yeah. Like there's so much more joy. But I feel like like I think we all kind of go through those moments where like we've personally taken that freedom for granted. For mm-hmm. sure. I'll I'll give this to whichever one of you feels comfortable enough to answer. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Gabby's like, uh, Dee Dee, would you like to take this one? No, let's, uh, let's I'm an open book. Uh, I know, I know. For me personally, it was like it was it was alcohol. It was I used to drink a lot mm-hmm. when I was in my early 20s, and when I came back to Christ, and when I was about 22, 23 years old, it was a struggle for me those first couple of years. And there was a couple of times where I was like, let me go back, mm-hmm. and I would. I'll go and I'll get drunk and I'm like, <sighs> yeah, why did I do this? <laughs> yeah. And it kind of showed me like, okay, I'm taking this for granted. I shouldn't like, he set me free from this. Why, why am I still in it? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So t- similarly for you guys, like what's something that you have taken that freedom for granted that he sets you free from? Oh girl, guys. So I think in my case, I always go back to my early twenties, late teens where I was, freshman in college, and I grew up in church. So I had Same. no excuse. <laughs> I knew, knew better. The word. 
Uh, my dad was an associate pastor growing up, very involved in ministry since I was a child. And then I get to my freshman year of college, first time out of the house, and I have all this freedom mm. to do whatever I pleased. And honestly, for me, it was just such a culture shock, but I fell into the whole partying. I was having a relationship with a guy and everything sort of just piled on so quickly. And I was still going to church. I was going to all these parties, but then still going to like whatever meeting on Tuesdays or Wednesdays mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just walking in both worlds and I was so dead in my sin. I got to the point where I, I felt nothing. Mm. I was completely fine showing one face to the people at church and completely fine showing another face everywhere else. And it literally took my parents catching me in the middle of my sin. <laughs> Ooh. Yikes. No. That's a story, you guys. <laughs> but I- Join I, us for our next podcast. <laughs> Gabby divulges all. Stay tuned, Gabby. Stay tuned. <laughs> but it, it literally took my parents catching me in the middle of my sin and me not feeling anything at all, just thinking, how am I gonna get out of this? Mm. That I realized there is something so wrong in my heart, in my spirit that you know, I'm seeing my parents like crying out to me, like, we didn't raise you this way. You should know better. Like, why, why are you letting yourself get to this point? Because it was, I was at a very self-destructive point in my life. And mm. to see how my parents reacted in that moment, just seeing how I, I grieved them and then starting to relay everything back to the gospel and thinking about the sacrifice the Lord made for me and thinking, wow, I really, I really messed up. I really, I really need this Jesus that I had grown up learning about my whole life. And I was thinking my parents, this is it. They're gonna excommunicate me. They're gonna <laughs> disown me like this. I'm gonna be kicked from the church. <laughs> what am I gonna do? <laughs> Disciplina a lo máximo. I'm gonna have to pay for my own cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> but their reaction was such a representation of the gospel, especially when when I think about my dad because he's like the strong disciplinary force, you mm. can say. And when they Amen. came back. I remember it was a weekend that I was going home for a winter break or a spring break or something. They went on a marriage retreat. They came back. I had days to wallow in my self-regret. <laughs> 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 when they came back, I was expecting the lecture. I was expecting the scolding. And the first thing that my, my dad said, my parent, but they both said, was how much they loved me, how much mm. that they forgave me for everything and they just said look we are here what is important to us isn't that you get good grades or that you're successful we just want to see you saved mm. we want to see you walking right with the lord so whatever it is that we need to do to uh, get you to that point that's what we're going to do and it impacted my my walk completely from then on it was a complete 180 and I never took that freedom again for granted because I remember what it was to feel nothing like just nothingness and to feel the sense of relief when I experienced that forgiveness and walking forward knowing that I don't have to ever feel like that again mm. I never have to walk forward alone in that again I'm free because the Lord had paid this debt for me before I even knew I would be in this sort of debt. Mm. And I always say, you never know what your struggle is gonna be. You never know what what's gonna be your catch, what you're gonna struggle with. But the Lord knew from the beginning and he still paid that for you. And mm. he still welcomes you with open arms so I don't even remember what the question was at this no, point. Yes. <laughs> no, it was good. good. But You're good. Yes. When you forget the question, it was a good answer. Yeah. It, was good. <laughs> <laughs> it took it, it went where it needed to go. All right. right, right, right. That's, that's all we can ask for. Didi, if you feel like sharing, you're more than welcome to. Oh, guys, I, I've done so many things in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I like. Part two and three to come. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I also, like in college, I went away to do all my nasty stuff. 
because I didn't want. My, I mean, thank so God. You're a prodigal. You're a yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I went to I went to school in Missouri in Springfield, Missouri, which is a college town, mm. and it was wild. And I started off okay. I had a good group of people around me, and then it just went so. very south. Yeah, mm. I also was in a relationship. I was engaged. I was like living with him. Mm -hmm. He was starting to be a pastor too. Wow. Yes. It happens to everyone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I went to a Christian school. It was Evangel University. It was a Christian college. Um, ended up breaking off the engagement, moved back here, kind of went in head first into just back into ministry and um, changed environments and was like, Lord, you know, you, you need to help me. But I also drank a lot. I was, mm -hmm. there was a point in time where I was probably drunk four nights out of the week. Same. And it's just, again, environment and the people um the lord got me out of all that still struggled throughout my my 20s and i think it's one of those things that's like you always struggle with it mm -hmm. because it comes to get you whenever you don't realize it um but it's always like i always have to be mindful of that um i mean i went through a divorce mm. <laughs> i was a single mom uh you know there's a lot of things that all you know the people that are well, actually not even close. Like a lot of people know my story. I've been able to share it, um, all the things that I went through. But um, but again, I think one of those, the biggest moments, you know, when I found out I was pregnant, um, I had been going through the divorce and my parents' reaction, it was just like, it was it was an image of yeah. what the what the what our father does for us as well. Yeah. Like as I, Gabby was talking, I'm thinking like, that's exactly what our father does for us. Like yeah. instead of, beating us down with you know the the stick he says i love you i still died for you he still sent his son jesus mm -hmm. he still um welcomes us with open arms he does not reject us he does not forsake us like my parents told me come we will take care of you come and live with us we will love you love the baby like you're good just heal and mm -hmm. then we'll help you pick yeah. up and build back up and it was never mentioned of like you did this and you did that we know i knew what mm -hmm. i did she knows what she did you know mm -hmm. you what you were doing like it's not this beating of like but you did this the word of god is very clear this is sin and this is not we know because we all grew up in it right and so yeah that um that reaction from my parents was just it just reminds you of god's grace and it also makes us very non-judgmental of all the things that we hear on mm -hmm. a weekly basis like mm -hmm. for real me i'm <laughs> i'm gonna say what to you yeah. like what your sin is greater than mine like I, I, don't, I don't know that's like pretty hard but um it just gives us also the opportunity because we've been in the pits and we've mm -hmm. experienced that grace not just saving grace but just in our sin mm -hmm. after we've known better um it reminds us that we cannot stand in judgment of anyone and we should respond how christ responds mm -hmm. i love you i you know i will walk with you um you are forgiven reminding them of truth reminding ourselves of truth mm -hmm. and uh yeah it's important for us so since we've experienced it to also give that to other people mm -hmm. And I think that's like, I think both of your stories there is just the really beautiful moment of when you take it for granted, someone's going to bring you with the gospel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the Lord will send the gospel back towards you and be like, hey, remember this? Yeah. <laughs> remember this? Just, I want you to remember what you're forgetting in this moment. Yeah. Just in the most loving way. Remember that I freed way. you from these things yeah. in the most loving way. Yeah. Don't go back. So I'll give you, I'll give you each a last question and you got 15 seconds to answer. All right. Each of you. So you each get 15 seconds. Uh, All right. What would you tell your younger self in order to not take Christ's freedom for granted? 15 seconds. Gabby. 15 seconds. I would tell her that there's no need to stray. There's nothing in this world that can ever satisfy or compare to the love that you will find in Christ mm -hmm. to keep it short and sweet. There you go. Dee Dee. Uh, what would I tell my younger self? Um, probably along the same line. It, it, you don't need it. Mm. There is nothing better. You don't need there it. There is not nothing it. better. There's nothing better out there. Mm. There isn't. I've tasted and seen, and it was not great. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm. there's no need. There's no need. There's only emptiness. That's good. Yeah. That's good. 
I think I'd tell myself, stop being an idiot. Uh, <laughs> stop being an idiot. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us on this episode of our podcast, Adultish. Man, we hope you enjoyed it, and happy 4th of July. We love you guys. Love See you next time. Love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode of Adultish, make sure that you check us out on Instagram at youngadults.cf and you check out our church at CF Miami. We post this incredible content once a month, so make sure you check back next month for the next episode of Adultish. Adultish.